I want a cat. Jessie wanted a cat. All her friends had pets. Some of them had big pets. And some of them had little pets. felt that she was the only girl in the world with no pet. And Jessie wanted a cat. Her mum and dad always said, no, crawly, creepy, yowly things, they called them. So they kept giving Jessie toy cats instead. But Jessie wanted a real cat. Then Jessie planned a wonderful plan. She collected lots of fluffy white cloth, some needles and cotton, and locked herself in her room. she made herself a cat suit. Next, she took all of her proper clothes and buried them in the garden. I'm going to be the cat in this house, she purred. What on earth do you think you're doing, said Mum. I'm going to be like this until I get a cat, said Jessie. And if I don't get a cat, then I'm going to be like this forever. On Monday, Jessie went to school. <laughs> when the teacher saw her cat speak, he shouted so loudly, she jumped up on top of the blackboard and wouldn't come down even for a saucer of milk. On Tuesday, Jessie went to a restaurant. Cats don't sit at tables, said Jessie, even in posh places. Milk and trout, she said to the waiter. And please don't cook the trout. May it be served down here? Certainly, madam, said the waiter. began to smell a fish. When it was time for bath and bed, Dad went to catch Jessie. Now you'll have to take that silly suit off, he grinned. No, I won't, said Jessie. Not until I get a cat. And Jessie curled up on her bedroom floor. In the middle of the night, Mum and Dad were roused by a horrible noise. It was like a million pigs falling downstairs and the neighbours banging on the front door. It was Jessie on the garden wall. I want a cat! She was howling. <coughs> Give her a cat, complained Mr Biggs from next door. Give her a cat, complained Mr Figs. Shouldn't be allowed, complained Mrs Figs. Stop that finishing noise, we're trying to get some pick-up here. Some of us have got to get on in the morning and stop it. 
Give her a cat, complained Mum. So early next morning, Dad went down to the pet shop and chose a cat. He took it to Jessie's door and knocked. Jessie, he called. I've got a surprise for you. Woof, woof, said Jessie. I want... Oscar got the blame. This is Oscar. And this is Oscar's friend, Billy. Oscar's mum and dad think Oscar made Billy up. Whenever Oscar talked about Billy, his mum and dad said, don't be silly. I'm sick and tired of you talking about Billy all the time. But Oscar and Billy were the best of friends. Day and night. Sometimes, Oscar let Billy have some of his dinner. Oscar, this really has to stop. But then, had to eat it all himself. When Billy left little bits of mud around the house... Oh, Oscar, how many more times? How long is this going to continue? Oscar got the blame. Now go away and stop talking about Billy, please. When Billy dressed the dog in Dad's things... Oscar! Oscar got the blame. When Billy put frogs in Granny's slippers. <laughs> Oscar got the blame. Oscar! When Billy made breakfast. Oscar, how many more times have I told you? Just come here, come here, get away from the breakfast things. I told you never to touch my eggs. Don't go near the fridge ever again, you understand? Oscar got the blame. When Billy washed the cat. Oscar got the blame. This is the first and last time you will wash the cat. Cats do not like water. Now go and dry the cat, would you please? Little fluff dry with the hair dryer and the towel. And put the cat back in the basket. And when Billy left the bathroom taps running... <laughs> Oscar got the blame. Right, that's it, Oscar. I've had enough. Up to your room and you're not having a story tonight. You can forget all about it. I don't want to hear any more nonsense. Do you understand? And was sent to bed without a story. It's not fair, said Oscar. Nobody believes in my friend Billy. <laughs> they never do, said Billy.
Super duper Jezebel. Jezebel was perfect in every way. She was so perfect, she was called Super Duper Jezebel. When other children came out of school, they were sometimes untidy. But Jezebel was always Super Duper Neat. Jezebel always kept her room tidy and she always put her things back in their boxes. And she cleaned up after the cat. with her friends. Jezebel always kept clean. She still liked to have two baths every day. Always wrote her thank you letters in neat writing without being reminded. And at school, she was best at everything. When she had spots, she always took her medicine and said, thank you. She could do up buttons and tie real bows on her lace-ups. Jezebel always ate up her meals. She always put her knife and fork together and she never picked her nose. Do that, you'll get a long fat nose like a carrot. I've got a pretty nose. Jezebel told other children not to do things. Sucking your thumb makes your teeth stick out. I never do that and I've got super teeth. Super duper. When the Prime Minister heard about Jezebel, she sent a special medal for being good. And a special statue of Jezebel was put up in the park to remind everybody else to try to be perfect. and went on television in a special show to talk about herself and her medal and the cup she'd won for being polite, being spotless, being helpful, being best at sums, reading poetry and writing. At school, Super Duper Jezebel wouldn't do anything wrong like the other noisy children who weren't perfect. Oh, Jezebel! A crocodile has escaped from the zoo! You mustn't run, it's against the rules. I always walk nicely. If you run, your socks will come down.
I'm coming to get you. Deep in another galaxy. A spaceship rushed towards a tiny, peaceful planet. It landed, and out jumped a loathsome monster. I'm coming to get you, it howled. The monster crushed all the gentle banana people. It smashed their statues. And scattered their books. Chewed up the mountains. Mm, mm, mm. Ah. And drank the oceans. It had the jellyfish for after. Uh, it gobbled up the whole planet. Except for the middle, which was too hot, and the ends, which were too cold. Still hungry, the monster flew off in its spaceship, nibbling small stars on the way. It had seen a pretty blue planet called Earth. monster found little Tommy Brown on its radar. I'm coming to get you, it roared. In a deep, dark cave. It was bedtime, and Tommy was listening to a story all about scary monsters. Slimy monster. And this was possibly the most frightening monster that anyone had ever seen. The spaceship neared Earth. And the monster found out where Tommy lived. It circled the town, looking for the right house. As Tommy crept up to bed, he checked every stair for monsters. He looked in every place they could hide. Once, he thought he heard a bump outside his window. The monster hid behind a rock and waited for the dawn. I'm coming to get you, it hissed. In the daylight, Tommy forgot all about monsters, and he set off happily for school. But then, with a terrible roar, the monster pounced.
I want my potty. Nappies are yuck, said the little princess. There must be something better. The pot is the place, said the queen. <laughs> First, the little princess thought the potty was worse. The potty's the place, said the queen. So, the little princess had to learn. Sometimes the little princess was a long way from the potty when she needed it most. Princess played tricks on the potty. And sometimes the potty played tricks on the little princess. Soon the potty was fun. princess loved it. Everybody said the little princess was clever and would grow up to be a wonderful queen. <laughs> the potty's the place, said the little princess proudly. One day, the little princess was playing at the top of the castle when... I want my potty! She cried. She wants her potty! Cried the maid. She wants her potty! Cried the king. <laughs> she wants her potty! Cried the cook. She wants her potty! Cried the gardener. She wants her potty! Cried the general. Uh, I know where it is. Cried the Admiral. So the potty was taken as quickly as possible to the little princess. Just a little too late. Thank you. 
The films you have been watching are based on the books of the same titles, written and illustrated by Tony Ross. They're published by the Anderson Press. They're available either as individual titles or in a collected volume entitled Five Favorite Tales. Tempo Preschool Video offers the perfect entertainment for the under fives. There's tales with unexpected twists and lots of fun in Not Now Bernard and Other Stories by David McKee. And I Want a Cat and Other Stories by Tony Ross includes the best-selling toddler classic I Want My Potty and Super Duper Jezebel. There's lots of fun for all the family. Sing along to all your favorite rhymes with Tempo's very own golden treasury of nursery rhymes. There's lots of favorite friends in the six stories featured on the Mr. Men and Little Miss video. Meet the junglies and join Tyrone Tiger on his first day at school. Don't miss the world's most lovable puppy and his friends in Spot's first video and the adventures of Spot. And learning can also be fun with Spot's alphabet and Spot learns to count, introducing basic educational concepts that any child can enjoy. Young Tom Pottage has difficulty coming to terms with his alphabet and counting, but Postman Pat is always ready to lend a hand. A timeless favorite with all children are the Paddington Bear stories, written by Michael Bond and narrated by Sir Michael Horton. Bump the Baby Elephant features in these gentle stories delightfully narrated by Simon Cadell. And perfect for pre-bedtime viewing are the tempo range of classic tales. The tales of Aesop are brought to life with delightful puppet animation and humorously narrated by Tom Baker. And Tell Me a Story includes well-loved stories told by Jan Francis. There's something for everyone with Tempo Video.